Hi all and welcome to the beta version of Jimmy Rig. Let's load up the character. This is Jimmy. He's got 6,316 polygons. But more importantly, he has no bones and he has no weight maps for those bones. Okay, so let's go over into Jimmy Rig. Here's the interface. Let's load up the character. Uh, let's get him Jimmy. There we go. Loading him in. Okay, so if you're like me and you're not very good with uh, rigging a character and you find the whole process a bit tedious, what Jimmy Rig is doing is automatically rigging the character here. Now, why is that special? Well, there's no model pre prerequisites required. So you don't have to put him in a specific pose. Uh, you don't have to have a closed manifold. Uh, basically, it will rig any model. Uh, it does this through volumetrics, so you can see there. Uh, and it uses the volumetrics to weight the mesh. And uh, let's say it uh, outperforms auto weight on some other well known packages. Okay, so uh, let's wait for a second. Now it's using a GPU uh, in the render view there, which you can see. Uh, which enables very, very fast feedback. In fact, it's pretty much real-time for uh, most purposes. It's a plain character, but you can have a, a textured character with normal maps uh, and specular and so on. Okay, so let's uh, load up a motion. We've got 2,500 or so Carnegie Mellon uh, University motions in the library to start with. And let's just adjust the character and add in a bit of shading. Now, what we've done there is we've used uh, auto cyclic animation. So, what it's done, let's move them down a bit. Okay. Uh, what it's done is it's looked for within that motion capture data a uh, start and end frame for a cycle loop. Automatically created it with a blend. And uh, we go, what we're going to do is we're going to make that into a clip. Uh, so that we can use it on our timeline. Okay, so let's bake that into clip. There we are. Drag it down onto the timeline. Okay, so if we drag that out, what, what it will do is Jimmy will walk, keeping his feet locked to the ground as necessary. Let's move him around. Okay, and let's add a few more frames there. 200, that'll make it interesting. Okay, and put him over on the side. And drop in something that will make him turn a corner. Look at that. <laughs> okay, so change the position of the turn. Okay, let's maybe drag the turn out so it takes longer. Okay, that's nice. Now you can make him turn left or right. That's okay, I'm happy with that. Okay, so he's walking away from us. Turn the corner. Let's open up a landscape. That'll make it a bit more interesting. Okay, tweak the camera a bit. Okay, yep. All right, okay, he's floating, that's no good. Um, let's get him sitting, or standing rather, on the ground. Okay, drag out our grounder plug-in and position him. Look at the IK working there, that's cool. Okay, and drag him, look, real time. Real time, lovely. We like that. Good. Okay, get his feet on the ground. Cool, okay, he's... Uh, his left foot needs a bit of adjustment. Let's uh, put a bit of offset there. Okay, lovely. And press play. And there we go. Our character's walking over the landscape, turning the corner, using a piece of motion captured data that's been made into a cyclic animation. Pretty cool, huh? Not bad for three minutes' work. Okay. And let's change the render quality settings in the GPU rendering. Okay, we like that. Adjust our camera a bit. Lovely. Okay, that looks pretty nice to me. So if you want to render that out, we can render that out to target sequence uh, with alpha, or we can render it out maybe just to a AVI. Okay, cool. Now what we're getting there is a 64 multi-pass rendering using the GPU. And on this pretty crappy system, about one frame per second.